Hi, I'm Bill Price, the sports editor of the New York Daily News. I also have a blog on the website, The Bitter Bill, where I discuss the Mets. They recently announced their 50th anniversary team, and there are some great choices on there, some questionable ones, and some ones that are very confusing. So I'll go over each position and sort of go over uh, how I feel about each spot. The obvious picks are right-handed starter Tom Seaver, left-handed starter Jerry Kuzman. I don't think any Met fan would argue with those. First base is Keith Hernandez. That's a no-brainer. Right field, Daryl Strawberry, that's also a no-brainer. And left field, Cleon Jones, when you think about it, not too many great left fielders in the history of the Mets, so Cleon Jones deserves to be on the team. But that's where it gets a little tricky. Second base, the choice was Edgardo Alfonso. He was a great Met. Didn't play second base a whole lot. I think most people would feel Wally Backman should get that spot, especially since he was a member of the 1986 World Championship team. The left side of the infield has Jose Reyes and David Wright. I think David Wright, most people feel comfortable with. Jose Reyes is a tough call. He was a great Met. He left as a free agent, left sort of on bad terms. I think a lot of older Met fans might take Buddy Harrelson at that spot. He was a member of the 1969 World Series team, played in the 73 World Series, and he's been a fan favorite for a long time. So I think Buddy Harrelson could be the shortstop, but Reyes is a, a fair choice as well. The questionable spots are center field and the relieving spots. Carlos Beltran was named the, the center fielder for the Mets on their all-time team. There's no question, if you look at his numbers, he has some of the best numbers of any Met position player of all time. Put up some great numbers, great hits, great stats. Had a, but he did have a rocky stay in New York, and of course no one will ever forget the end of the 2006 NLCS when he struck out looking against the Cardinals. Again, if you put it by numbers alone, I think Beltran is the winner from a sentimental value. Maybe Mookie Wilson, maybe Lenny Dykstra get the spot. Maybe even Tommy Agee, who made some amazing catches in the 1969 World Series. The big questions are the reliever spots. The Mets chose as the right-hand reliever, Roger McDowell. Now, Roger McDowell, of course, was a fan favorite. He was a prankster was an integral role in the 1986 World Series team. But if you look at numbers alone, Armando Benitez, who had almost as many say, uh, twice as many saves as McDowell in the same amount of time, five years, should be the right-handed reliever. Of course, Met fans don't like Armando Benitez because he gave them agita and he blew tons of saves, especially game one of the World Series against the Yankees in 2000. So that's probably why he's not on the list. Left-handed reliever, the, the panel went with Tug McGraw, who, of course, was a fan favorite. His, you, you gotta believe cry in 73, really kept the Mets uh, going, got them into the World Series. But to me, the choice should be Jesse Orozco. He was incredible in 1986, got the last out of the 1986 NLCS, got the last out of the 1986 World Series, and to me, it was the best lefty reliever in the history of the Mets. The final spot is manager. Davey Johnson, who won the 1986 World Series with the Mets and really helped turn the Mets around when he came on board in 1984, got the nod. But to me, Gil Hodges has to be the manager of the all-time team. Gil came in, changed the entire perception of the Mets, and of course, led them to the World Series in 1969. So again, there's the Mets' all-time team. Those are my thoughts. It's a great discussion. There are some positions that are hard to argue. There are some that you could debate about, and it makes for good debate among Mets fans.